Today I want to talk about how to weather a die cast vehicle. This method does apply sort of to your uh, plastic model kits. However, this does involve removing the paint but leaving some of the original paint so it might not fully apply. There are various methods such as the salt technique um, or you can simply use your airbrush but this method I find works wonders. It involves keeping some of the original paint as well as adding bits of rust. So let's go over uh, some of the um, tools that we're using. First up is our paint and poly remover. Now this comes in a um, semi-liquid. It's kind of a, a solid form, not necessarily um, watery, which is nice because it tends to group up you can target certain areas of the model where you would primarily see the rust. Uh, we do have a Tamiya weathering powders. They come in a various shade, different colors. Those are the weathering powders. You can find all sorts of weathering powders. I tend to use Tamiya. I just like how they apply. Now they do come with brushes on their own. However, I use um, Eco Tools. These are a uh, makeup brush. You can get them in, in a thick bristle or a small bristle. So I use those when I'm applying um, the weathering powder. Paint, I use just acrylic paint. And if you want a sample, I use the, uh, the Nature's Touch. You can find at your local hobby store. But use whatever paint you want. Now you can use uh, oil paint. However, in this technique, I like to bunch up the paint, make it real thick, and your oil-based paint is a little bit harder to do with that. So that's why I tend to stick to the acrylic paint. But again, use what you're comfortable with. Um, I also use regular paint brushes. Um, I, I have three sets of paint brushes. Uh, the brown ones I use for my acrylic. I have a black coated handle. I use those for the oils and I have a traveling set as well for when I'm out traveling. If I want to do some modeling, I can bring that with. And that's more of the cheaper set, not quite as high quality. And then I carry along this is the box um, that the uh, makeup brushes came in. I use that to put the um, stripper, the paint remover. You can kind of see how it's kind of globby. I keep that always on hand. And that makes a nice little case to put the paint stripper. And I use uh, cotton buds, cotton swabs, Q-tips, whatever it is you call them in your country or area of this country. Alright, so let's get started. This is a 118 scale Ecto-1 Cadillac, the Ghostbusters vehicle made by Hot Wheels. Now depending on the quality of model, the quality of the finish, the lacquer, the sealant that is on top of your model will depend on how long your paint remover has to sit. If you're trying to weather out a Franklin or a Danbury Mint car, those take a little longer for the remover to actually penetrate through the poly coat. Some of your $20, you know, $15 models, maybe a Maisto or some of the lower end die cast cars, they're a little bit easier to weather out because the coat, the clear coat on top is not as strong. So what I'm going to do is grab some of my paint remover and this does kind of glob up and bunch up as you can see which is okay. You want it to kind of be globby and um, you're just going to spread it over the vehicle on the parts that you want rusted out and it's going to bunch up like that and that's fine. It'll create some organic shapes. Just spread it around with your um, cotton bud, cotton swab. Get it to uh, mimic the rust that you would see in real life because this is, you're going to wipe this off eventually and this is going to remove the paint that is on there. So you get down to a bare metal form. Again, let it sit for as long as you need. You can, um, you can wipe it off and then if you find that you want to do more, that is totally fine. Once you uh, do wipe it off though, it is very hard to undo that process. 
since the idea is to remove the pre-existing paint. So we're just going to glob it on like so. And we're going to let that sit. Now with this model, I kind of like how that looks actually. Get it to how you want it. And um, we're going to move on to the second step. While that sits, we can do this because I've pre-done the model up in stages. Now when you do this naturally, you're going to want to do it all at one time. So put put your um, remover on, wipe it off from this section, do all the sections, and then do your next step all together. And in doing so, you will keep all your rust patterns the same, you will keep all your uh, painting the same. Everything is going to match. If you do it in sections, you might have done a different technique the time before. And so it's always best just to keep things sort of on the same basis. Alright, so what we have here is you can kind of see that areas that I've already stripped off the paint. So what we're going to do is take a brush, dip it into a... I start off with the dark color first. And we're just going to kind of dab it on. And it's okay if it, if it overshoots some of the white. In this case it's white. In your case it could be red, blue you know etc you pick a color whatever color your car is um, we're gonna just gonna dab it on nice and thick you don't really need to worry how perfect it's gonna look because you you'll use the weathering powders and that will clear things up kinda smooth it out weathering powders are great for blending and in this case we use a couple of different colors Now you can do one of two things. You can either let this dry and then add your other color. You can kind of keep your brush wet, dip it again, and blend them this way. But it's all in preference on what you want to do. There's really no right or wrong way. I'm Sometimes I do wipe off the brush if it gets too thick. Go with a lighter color. And this just adds a variance. I know it looks like a mess right now, but I promise in the end it's going to look great. And now if you got it real globby like this, then what I do choose your brush size appropriately you don't want a really big brush if you're using a lot of small areas conversely if you're doing small if you're doing uh, big areas a small brush might not be the best but again you know what's appropriate for your size of model so we're gonna go grab a thicker dry brush And with this, we can sort of blend some of those shades and tones together. This is going to inevitably pick up a lot of that paint that we had laid down. It's going to blend it all into a nice... You don't want it even. You don't want to um, mix it dead. You want to keep a little bit of variance in the color. But get it get it flat, get it smooth um, I shouldn't say smooth but you don't want it to be real globby, you want it to be um, on the surface but yet you want to leave some texture, this is great because once you get it done you can actually feel the texture of the rust One last prop or a tool that I forgot to mention that we use is a clear coat. Now, if you're doing a rust, you're going to want to use um, a flat. This is a tester's bottle. Um, this is a nice lacquer. 
Uh, you can buy the cheap at your local Walmart, Target, um, home improvement store. That necessarily doesn't matter. Testers is good for when you have decals involved because the other um, clear coats, lacquers, polyurethane, sort of, they will potentially eat away on your decals. So we're going to let that dry, spray it with a clear coat, and then we're going to end up with this. Now this is just the browns and the reds that I used. Let that dry, I put a clear coat on. Now it comes time for the weathering. I use sort of the same method as the paint. I start off with the dark color. In this case, this one's called rust. I'll use this color first. Maybe some of this uh, soot, as it's called. Black, it kind of looks like to me. Now essentially what you're going to do, let me um, wipe off my workspace here. I got a little, little bit of the paint remover there. And actually I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this off. See how that fared before I go any further. Now you can take a look at that and we'll show you here. That seemed to do a pretty decent job. Now I didn't wipe it all the way. You can wipe it off more and you'll see. The harder you scrub, the more flakes you get. I think that looks kind of nice. And if you do it long enough but not too long, you'll get some lines in there where the paint's starting to chip or starting to bubble up, but it hasn't yet. So it'll look really natural. All right. Clean up my area a little more. Okay, now on to the weathering. I use a very small bristle brush for the initial rust. Get some of the weathering powder on there. And I just dab it on and work it into the already existing paint. Get it onto the model itself. Spread it around. Work it in. You're going to want to blend all those colors together and it's going to start to show up. You'll see on the edge of where you painted it's a little bit raised from the paint the original existing paint as compared to what you stripped off and then repainted. So I'll start off with this and I'll get this first coat down and then I'll add a clear coat again a flat clear coat and you're going to just, um, it, it should dry relatively quickly so you can, so you can move on. But as you can see up in here, it's really dark. I don't know if you can see that on camera very well, but it stays pretty dark. So you're going to want to cover that up, but not all of it. You want to keep some of your dark areas as well as making some of them still uh, stay to the initial paint. Now in the salt technique, you would strip the whole body and paint it all brown, adding salt, then painting your top color. So that is very common amongst plastic models. Um, and you can use that as well. However, I like to keep some of the original color, especially on big projects like this where you have the red stripe on both sides. Now, if you want to do more of your first color make it a little darker because again the more you add the darker it'll become you can just add a clear coat and then keep doing that process but you can already see here 
it's starting to look and blend in more with your vehicle. And you'll find that as you do this, you end up chipping off some paint and that's okay. That just adds to the more realism. Now if we, so once you get that done you're going to clear coat it and then move on to either your next color or the same color. Now over here on this side we've already had the paint dry, we've already done a clear coat, we've already added some of our weathering powder. So what I like to do, I keep touching the wet paint on the other side. I recommend letting your model dry before you continue uh, with this process. I will use some of this um, red. The exact color is orange rust, kind of orangish red. And this is very powerful in terms of your saturation of color. So if you're not careful, you will make your whole model look orange which is okay you can always undo unlike the computer you'll have to um, set up pressing command Z control Z etc you will have to repaint or um, add a different weathering powder but I recommend always clear coating it first you do have the option to wipe it away sometimes if you're lucky cotton but you can um, I'm, I have not tried water yet. Sometimes just with brute force you do get it to come up a little bit depending on how you have laid it down and how many coats the sealant you have, etc. Now I'm just dabbing this in there. I don't want to overpower what I already have but I want to blend it around Now the great thing about this is you can go strictly onto the white, um, onto the paint. You don't need to actually strip the paint. In that case, I would recommend clear coating your vehicle first, or you know whatever you're trying to weather, and then adding it directly to the paint. You'll add it to the clear coat which is on. Now the um, the matte clear coat does help it to adhere better than your um, gloss coat but should you want to do a gloss coat you can there's no rhyme or reason why you can't now let's just take a look at that that is with two layers of a uh, rust brown rust and then an orange rust alongside of the paint that we use, the browns, the reds, and that really does give it a nice look. Now I'll have to um, add my clear coat and just a light spray, you know, little distance, and you just give it a light mist, and it turns out really nice. Now I'll show you the top part we already have finished. So with this, I've added um, several layers of rust you know and each time I would spray a clear coat over it um, do it do it again and then I've and then I took um, the small brush and I sort of got the top all covered in the orange rust and I scraped some of it away by pressing harder with a uh, cotton bud you can sort of wipe away some of the rust clear coated it and I think it looks really I think it looks realistic. It really does add that extra bit of realism to your model. <clears throat> now, again, there are more than one way to um, more than more. There are more than one ways. There's more than one way that you can um, rust out your model. It doesn't have to be a specific way. There is no real uh, right or wrong in terms of rusting your model. You can over rust, but again, it's all in what you want your model to look like. If you want it to look just completely covered in rust with nothing showing, that's your preference. And as an artist, because this really is an art form, you really do have that have that freedom. So that is what we got going on for rust. 
Let me know what you think in the comments if it was helpful. And perhaps I'll maybe um, show some more how-tos.